Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Letter, where we're now, Rebecca, almost got killed. This is why you don't have paranormal flashbacks and drive. It's true. Like, that's a lesson everyone should learn very early on in life. Yeah. You save those for out of the car. <laughs> yeah, you know, just tell the ghost to wait. It can wait. <laughs> it begins innocently enough. Tuesday morning arrives like any other day before it, bright and clear. Even though it comes with an extra helping of the unusual October weather, I appreciate being able to catch a glimpse of the clear skies lately. After going through about a sickness last week, it does something to lift the mood of what would otherwise be a dreary morning. And despite being mostly a creature of habit, I wind up waking earlier than usual because of it. Still not earlier than Isabella, it appears. I've assumed she'll take a day or two off because of what happened to Miss Cooper, but that doesn't seem to be the case. The sound of the morning news drifts from her unit when I walk past on the way to my mailbox. Chances are around this hour, she's already dressed and ready to go, probably just waiting for the next bus to arrive. I've tried following her example before, but I don't think I'll be repeating that. Uh, really? How can anyone be up before the sun is up? Yo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a habit she got from home, she said, instilled in her by the kind of life she grew up in. Like clockwork, it's always at 4 a.m., either to help with the chores or prepare her little siblings for school. It surprised me the first time. She just didn't look like someone who could. Ooh. In the end, I've simply passed it off as one of the many things anyone will have to get used to around her. <laughs> Not that I'll ever fully understand. I'm my parents' only child. We weren't well off, but so far, I've lived a relatively easy life. I didn't have to think about bills or food for the next day or paying for any siblings' tuition on top of my own or supporting a sick father's medication. All I have to worry about were my grades. If it, uh, if it gained mom and dad's approval or whatever, we'd be having for dinner. When put next to hers, they all pair in comparison. They look less like problems and more like petty issues this way. Petty issues. But as unimportant as it all sounds, sometimes this ugly head rears at the most inappropriate moments. And sometimes they come through your mailbox in the form of a fancy-looking letter, pretty ribbons and all. Whoever sent this has spent silly money on the envelope alone. Ooh, it's so snazzy. Yeah. Jeez, I, I wonder what this could be. I love the wax seal, too, on it. That is pretty cool. Verging on ridiculous, really. I can already imagine Isabella wrinkling her nose when she sees this. Then she'll complain about unnecessary expenses and rich people problems. I'm almost afraid to touch it myself. As if simply brushing a hand against its crisp surface will be enough to put a crease on it, and it'll be a terrible slight to the sender. But as extravagant as I find this, it isn't really the first time I've received one. Most of the time, it's not even for me, so who am I to complain? Either way, no look of surprise crosses my face once I flip the envelope over to see my parents' names written in a neat script. Nothing new, then. Mr. Alistair and Miss Ellison Gales. Their years in the academy naturally brought with it a various connections, people from other fields, art, science, business, politics, you name it. This one, though, gives off a much off a much personal vibe. Letters like this usually come from old students, people who've grown fond of my parents, and they, in turn, treat like children of their own. I've only met a few of them. Most have moved on to become successful in their chosen careers, and little letters like this are their way of expressing gratitude. It's one thing mom and dad are proud of, rightfully so, and I'm happy for them. But there are times. How come they're getting in their? How come she's getting their mail? I was kind of curious about that. Cause she, they like live in an apartment complex. Yeah. So I can't imagine that it's like big enough for three people. No, and or do they live there for a little bit? Or I, I don't know. Just oh, I wonder if because it's not, it sounds like they travel. So I wonder if their mail is getting forwarded for the oh, time being. I forgot about that. Maybe it is. There are times I wish they'll remember they have a daughter here, the real one. <laughs> Not that it's of any importance now. It's not like they didn't raise me well and provide for me. They did. I wouldn't be here. Or I wouldn't be where I am now if it weren't for their hard work. And like a dutiful child, I do everything I can to give back. Even if it's a small thing as letting them know they've got another mail waiting for them. The phone rings for a good minute before someone answers. Mum, her voice is warm as I remember. Becca? Hi, Mum. How's the conference going? Well enough. Until your da sprained his ankle. Of course. Oh no, is it bad? I'm alright. In case anyone in this family cares to listen, I'm alright. <laughs> Very much alive, darling. <laughs> well, this there sounds familiar. He'll be up and walking in a few weeks, don't worry. We're going to have to extend our stay here until it heals, though. I like his killing me, thanks for asking. <laughs> is something the matter? Nothing big. Just that this mail arrived for you this morning. A lie. Thankfully, she doesn't notice. 
Although if I'm going to be honest, a small part of me yearns for her to do so and ask me about it, but I put down that idea almost as soon as it surfaces. I should make them fret, they're busy. Mm, what does it say? Raise your glasses, give cheers to the good times, blah blah. Mega manners. That isn't how I taught you to read. <laughs> <Ouch>. <laughs> Sorry. You are cordially Ah, it's an invitation, Mum, for a housewarming party. From uh Hana? The name rings a bell, though at the moment I can't recall when or where I've heard it recently. It must be nothing too important if I didn't bother committing it to memory. There are a lot of Hanas in the world, so who knows? Hmm. Hana. Hana. Um, she also wrote you a note, Mum. It says you used to be her private tutor at the Evans Mansion, and that she misses you and would love, would love to see you two again. Makes my heart clench to read another, openly say those words to them, the same ones I want to tell them. I want to see you too. It's been years since we've been together as a family, and if there's one thing that hasn't changed from childhood, it's that mom and dad are still busy with their respective careers. Out of the country, away on some meeting or symposium, sometimes for months on end. It only grew more frequent with the years until I'm old enough to live on my own. I'd like to think that's how I've become independent at such an early age. They've always praised me for that. At times I wish they didn't. married a few years ago. Seven now, I think. But, nah, uh, they grow up so fast, these kids. Yeah, she invited us to that, too. Fonti de Medici. But we missed that one because you had to present your paper in Singapore. We did send her a note after. Still a shame we couldn't attend, though. Yes, yes, such a shame. <laughs> what is it about this time? She sent another invite for a housewarming party. Becca, when is it? This Friday, Mum. Oh, that's too bad. We'd love to be there. But Dar's not in a condition to go walking around. I guess we'd have to decline again. I really miss that girl. Wow. I could go in your place. I'm right here. <laughs> right? <laughs> I let it slip without thinking. Personally, I've never been fond of gatherings, regardless of how simple people make it seem. But if there's one thing I hate hearing, that disappointed note in Mum's voice always ranks first. Whether it's directed at me or some other thing doesn't matter. Are you sure? Don't you have work this Friday? The event will be in the evening, Mum. It shouldn't take anything away from my schedule. It's all right. The invites are two people. I can bring someone with me so things don't get boring. I see. Maybe you can also invite Ashton. <laughs> Mom, that's a sure no from him. He hates attending parties. But, but I'll see what I can do. Oh, our face is red. Like hey, strawberry. <laughs> I can always bring Isabella with me. You know her. She won't say no if there's food involved. Okay, if it's not going to be a big problem for you, I don't see why not. We owe you this How about one, you darling. come see me? No problem, you know. Mum. I'll even say hi to Hana for you. Please do. And let her know we'd love to see her once we're back in the city. Leave her our number or something. I will. But you know, the two of you would have become really good friends. Don't you remember? You met with her once. If my memory serves me right... You were 12 then? This too, I can't recall. I was going to say, who remembers that? I don't remember what I did when I was two. No. Or 12. I remember or 10. 12 a little bit. <laughs> little bits here and there, but two? Yeah. No. I said 12. Yeah, and then I said 12 a little bit. Yeah. But I just said, did you say 12 or two? She said 12. Oh, I thought she said two. That's why I was, I was wondering like, where what? you got two from. I thought I heard two. <laughs> there was a two in it. Well, okay, no, I really, who the hell remembers everything when you're 12? Yeah. At this point in life, she's like, what, 20 something? Something like that. It's probably one of those meetings where they can only, where we only talked a bit before going our ways. If she did leave an impression, I'm pretty sure I'd have written about it somewhere or at least recognized her name. As it is, the only few people I remember clearly from that time in my life is Ashton. And Mandy. I wonder why that's in italics. I Did mean, you have a falling out with Mandy? I was like, have we, has the name Mandy come up? I don't think mm -hmm. so. To some extent. Mum must have sensed my confusion because she laughs. Don't push yourself too hard, darling. Really? It felt like having two daughters back then. Ooh. Sometimes I wish they didn't send her away to boarding school. But, well, you know how often that goes with them. Still, try talking to her while you're there. Oh, we'll see. I'll let you know what happens after. I'm looking forward to it, darling. Take care of yourself. Will do. You too, Mom. Bye. Uh, tell Dar to be careful next time. 
She chuckles then. A hearty one, tender and always light on my ears. She may be a stern teacher, but this is part of her I love the most. The sound of it still echoes even as our call comes to an abrupt end, bringing with it a memory from so many years ago. When life and responsibilities that accompany adulthood are things far from our minds. If given the chance, I'd love to go back to those. I don't dwell on it, though, shaking it all away almost as soon as the memory forms a clear picture in my head. I've always wondered how Isabella can easily pretend everything's normal over a phone call, then bounce back to her usual self immediately after. I've seen her do it plenty of times. For me, it just drains whatever energy I have. And with a whole day of teaching still ahead of me, I can't afford to look exhausted in front of my students. Even for a wee bit, it's never a good example to set. So with another sigh, I put everything at the back of my mind and tread back to my room. The rest of my day waits. Fifteen minutes later, I'm heading back out, dressed for the day, my car keys in hand. Ordinarily, I don't stop for anything. There's never a need to. That's the beauty of this apartment complex. It's quiet and everyone keeps to themselves. No useless platitudes in the morning. No need to wear a smile on your face, lest other people are nosy enough to ask. Today, however, the morning broadcast still plays from Isabella's room. My brisk play slowly stops and a frown gradually forms in my face. She hasn't left. Of course, this isn't unusual. There are times when I've left earlier than she did, like last Friday before their open house. But those days are few and far between. It only happens in the direst of circumstances. The last part of that might be a bit of an exaggeration. However, with what's happened in the last few days, maybe today is one. The death of a friend isn't something anyone can brush off, and for someone like Isabella... Isabella's the kind who gets attached to people easily. With Zachary, Ashton, and I, that has been the case. I can't imagine what she might be going through right now, especially when the woman who was someone she owed a lot, despite yeah. their training being brief. I was going to say, it was a close, like, work relation, too. Yeah. So, that's rough. I've given her her space the last night in deference, but perhaps today might be the proper time to check on her. Uh, whatever. I've still got time anyway. With light steps, I move closer to her door, hand already poised to knock. Still, I don't do so until I hear her answer me. Isabella? Belle? Are you in there? No answer. After a second, I finally knock, lightly so I don't disturb her in case she's sleeping and has merely left the telly running last night. Never mind how she never lets that happen. Is this ever. the night she stayed at Zach's? Oh, wait. No, wait. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, that was the 25th. I just don't know what today is. Yeah, hey, I forgot already. When's uh, the housewarming party? Yeah, when's the, the party is... Oh, no, it's... It's gotta be, what, the 28th, I think, was the party? Yep. Okay. So, yeah, I don't think we're quite there. Yeah, because they said it's coming up. Okay. Uh, I just want to check on you before I leave. Is that okay? Are you going to work today, Belle? Still nothing. I'm about to leave. If you want, I can drop you off. Oh, we still didn't answer our question about when this is in relation to yeah. when she stayed with Zach, but mm -hmm. whatever. We'll figure it out. Another round of knocking. Then I'm fishing out a copy of her key from my bag and unlocking the door. She lent it years ago after I complained about the mess and offered my help in cleaning up. I thought the gesture was completely unnecessary back then. After all, I could always knock. But she never did bother taking them from me. Always returning it or turning away from the conversation whenever I insist. At one point, I've simply stopped trying to hand it back to her. Isabella? I'm coming in, alright? Without waiting for her to answer, I push the door open and step inside. Her unit's still a mess. Instant noodle cups on the table, a pile of clothes on, the s on one side, paper strewn about everywhere, and an unkempt bed, among other things. This... This much is a given. Will always be a given. I've been here several times already, and I still wonder how she can function like a human being with a, this with the place in the state. However, that's neither here nor there. I'm not sure what I'm expecting, but it's certainly not finding an empty flat. Granted, she could have left earlier, far earlier than usual, but she never ever leaves without making sure she's unplugged everything. That's something she doesn't forget to do. It doesn't help that her bathroom appears unused this morning. Another habit, and it can only mean she hasn't been here since last night? Perhaps. Oh, yeah, yep. Okay, so this is the night she stayed with Zach. Perhaps even since the morning after Miss Cooper's death. Either idea doesn't sit well with me, what with the news we've been hearing lately. The authorities are still trying to find the cause of death for all the victims. Early investigation revealed most of them were employed under Briar Realty Corporation at the time of death. Meanwhile, BRC has refused to comment on this. I don't know what they could comment on, really. Yeah. I mean, unless they're actually up to something, but... Uh, maybe they're looking for, like, 
the sympathy. Right. Like, well, yeah. Reg- regret kind of like of her loss kind of thing. I don't know. Gathering my wits, I immediately place a call to her mobile. Yeah, we're on the 25th. Okay. It rings for a good minute, the sound a comfort in itself, but when another minute rolls by without her answering. Well, I'm not a woman prone to panicking, sudden bouts of temper maybe, but never panic, despite how I may sound when speaking. And when it ultimately goes straight to her voicemail, a sigh is the only thing I let out. The pause doesn't last long, though. In the next moment, my fingers are already moving across the screen in search of the two people who might be able to help. It's Ashton numbers I find first and dial. Call it habit, but even Isabella thinks he's dependable when the situation calls for it, despite how much they give each other grief. That already says a lot about him. There's Zachary, but around this hour, he's probably still sleeping. If he has freelance work, it's very likely he's just gotten himself in bed. He's the last person I want to bother, if anything. The wait doesn't take long. Soon a click, then Ashton's voice echoes through the receiver, rough and still heavy with sleep. He never did grow fond of mornings. Christ, what time is it? Oh, what's up? Not you, apparently. <laughs> I or might or kill somebody if they said that to me in the morning. <laughs> yeah. I'm going back to sleep. No, Ash, hold on. This is important. Back at stakeout last night. Make this quick. I still got a few hours before the chief bothers me. Sorry, I'll let you go back to sleep after. It's just that. Wait, you were on a stakeout last night? Oh, God. Did I say that? Uh, shit. Forget I said that. Forget I said anything. Forget we had this conversation. So, you have no idea? talking or whatever for a second. Belle didn't come home last night. She's gone. <gasps> Isabella. Instead of an answer, a brief pause comes after, followed by something blunt and heavy hitting a hard surface and a string of rather colorful curses from him. <laughs> the moment might have been one of the many things I'll keep to myself and remember fondly in the next few days, if things aren't the way they are. When he picks up again, there's no trace of sleep left in his voice. <laughs> Isabella's gone, Ash. She didn't come home last night. Her flat's empty. She left her telly running. You know she doesn't do that at- Okay, Becca, stop. Calm down first. You're starting to panic. I'm not! You are. Breathe. She's panicking a little. One person's not going to simply disappear like that. This is Isabella we're talking about. Did you try calling her? What did you think is the first thing I did? She's not picking up. It went to her voicemail. How about Zach? Did you check with him? Not yet. I didn't want to bother him. You know he has trouble sleeping and all that. All right. I'll go ask Zach. I'll call you back. No, 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 wait! He ends the call before I can utter a single word of protest. But for the first time since entering this room, tension is gone from my shoulders and my breathing is eased. The bed creaks as I sink down on it with a sigh. The telly still blares the same uninteresting news and I'm surrounded by clutter. All the same, it feels strangely calm to be here without worry nagging at me. I'll have to apologize to Zachary later for sending Ashton his way this early, but for now, relying on the latter for this isn't the wrong choice. It never will be. That's something I won't ever doubt in him, much like his promises. And true to his words, he calls back only a few minutes after the last one has ended. She's with Zach. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. She could have at least sent a message last night. What are you, her mother? It's one thing to hear that from Isabella, but from Ashton? I don't want to hear anything like that from you. <laughs> I'm serious. You've got to stop treating her like she's one of your students, Becca. You don't have to keep tabs on her every time. Last I checked, she's only three years younger than the two of us. That's almost a decade gap from those kids you're teaching, you know? There's the person who keeps calling her Scaredy Cat. I... I... That's... That's not related. Yes, it is. At all. <laughs> anyway, Very related. I'll go check how she's doing. Don't stress yourself out. Wait, you? Don't you have a precinct to be at? Whatever Don't happened to, to find? not treating her like yeah. one of my students? Because if anyone's going to ask me, I think you're doing the same thing. Zach said it's an emergency. Something happened last night. Emergency? He didn't put in those exact same words, but it sounded like it. Ash, what really happened? Is Isabella fine? She's all right. She's safe. Zach let her stay the night after she... Look, okay. Z-Man wasn't clear about it, but let me handle this. I'll check on her. I'll bring her home. It sounds like a lie if I've ever heard one. The sort where he omits things so people won't fret, and I'm not sure whether I should be happy he cares that much to do that. 
There shouldn't be a need for this between us, is there? We grew up together, didn't we? He knows I'm capable of at least hearing out the truth without it gnawing at me for the rest of the day. He knows me better than that. I know him better than that. Frankly, there's plenty of other things to say about this. But despite and after all the trouble he went through and how things are moving at the moment, only one thought occurs to me. What should I say? Uh, well, we kind of know how it goes. Yeah. So maybe it's so, sorry, it's yeah, sorry for the trouble because Ash is the one that goes to the apartment. Well, like usual, we'll just make this choice in the next episode. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, that's how it works. The decision we'll comes up, it. and we'll we'll fig- we'll figure it out next time. You you might think we debate about this between episodes. We we don't. We just come back on and go. Uh, uh what do you want to do? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, that's gonna do it for us. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.